Well, many Americans would love not to be dependent on foreign oil energy sources, but most people can only think about energy independence. In this report, the Monitor's Ryan Nockhan explains how one Georgia farmer has actually jumped into the biofuels arena, and he's not looking back. Philip Jennings knows how to grow the perfect field of grass to either put in the most famous of events or even just in your front lawn. But three years ago when he made a trip to Mississippi State University's research lab, he found a different type of grass that caught his eye. And I said, what is this? Well, it's giant miscanthus. Oh, well, what do you do with it? Well, it's a biofeedstock. So I immediately became interested in, in their research that they were doing because we looked at all kinds of varieties of energy crops there, the energy canes, the switch grasses, and everything. And I said, if you're after yield, this is going to be far above anything that we've ever seen before. For many in the agricultural industry, they often refer to Jennings as the sod father. And when he discovered the giant miscanthus at Mississippi State, it was an opportunity he couldn't refuse. The objective of this is to bring this country to energy independence. Not knowing much about renewable energies, Jennings believed in this plant so entirely that he started his own biofuels business. And for three years now, Sunbelt Biofuels has been researching, testing, and growing Freedom Giant Miscanthus with the hopes that one day the cellulosic ethanol produced by this grass can fuel our cars and our homes. It's going to come down to price and it's going to come down to yield. Because of the lower input cost with Freedom Giant Miscanthus and your high yield, you come out with a much lower number of production than you do in other crops where your input costs are higher with a low yield. It's all about the numbers. You have a lot lower inputs it's, uh, it doesn't require as much labor to plant or even to grow the crop. And it's, it's just a lot, you get a lot out of it for what little you have to put into it. Once Miscanthus is brought to the fields, it can produce up to 25 tons an acre. And I'm not a very tall man, but this grass can grow up to 10 feet tall. And it's a perennial plant too, which means every year you can go and just mow it down like you would hay. And you don't have to plant it again. It'll just grow right back up. Your biggest input cost on this material is harvesting because you're harvesting 20 to 25 to 30 very, very large bales of hay per acre. The license to grow Freedom Giant Miscanthus can be obtained by farmers right now and used on small scales on their own farms. This ought to be a, a good plant to, to pull out. Jennings says that if all is done right by the third year, a farmer would look to make between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars an acre. It's coming. I think it will probably start with other biomasses. It may be hay, it may be trees. There are a number of ways. Cellulose is cellulose. But in the end, it's going to boil down to yield and price. Rob Evans is planting Freedom Giant Miscanthus this spring and is hopeful that this grass will not only grow on his farm, but will grow in demand. There's different types of macanthus, and this one seems to stand out way more than any other grass that, or switch grass or what's been out there. And we've just gone from there and it's progressed to this that we have it here. Jennings doesn't want giant miscanthus to compete for land with food crops. Instead, he would like many farmers to use unutilized land and steadily expand to attract a cellulosic ethanol plant to Georgia or the southeast. If we get our energy policy under control and come to a self-sustaining country when it comes to energy, we won't need another dollar put in a stimulus program. We'll have all the stimulus that we need in this country to have, again, the greatest global power in the world. Leading our country by taking those first steps with agriculture, with the hopes of finding a renewable source of energy and of life. For the Georgia Farm Monitor, I'm Ryan Nockhan.